evening friends, I am Pradeep Pandyala, Professor of Anesthesiology from Ashram Medical College, University of Andhra Pradesh, India. Friends, as I had promised you earlier, I will be bringing something very special and medical conditions and the treatment and how to deal with it. Today I am going to deal with hemiparesis. Hemiparesis or unilateral paresis is weakness of one entire body. Hemi means half. Hemiplegia is common word which you must have heard also known as stroke. Hemiplegia in its most severe form that's the most severe form of hemiparesis. It's a complete paralysis of half of the body. Hemiparesis and hemiplegia can be caused by different medical conditions including congenital causes, trauma, tumors or strokes. Depending on the type of hemiparesis diagnosed, different bodily functions can be affected. Some effects are expected like partial paralysis of a limb on the affected side. Other impairments though can at first seem completely non-related to the limb weakness but are in fact a direct result of the damage to the affected side of the brain. People with hemiparesis often have difficulties maintaining their balance due to limb weaknesses leading to an inability to properly shift body weight. This makes performing everyday activities such as dressing, eating, grabbing objects or using the bathroom very difficult. Hemiparesis with origin in the lower section of the brain creates a condition known as ataxia. A loss of both gross and fine motor skills. Often manifesting as staggering and stumbling. Pure motor hemiparesis, a form of hemiparesis characterized by one-sided weakness in the leg arm and face is the most commonly diagnosed form of hemiparesis. I hope I am making it very clear to you what is hemiparesis and hemiplegia. The most common cause of hemiparesis and hemiplegia as I had mentioned is stroke. Strokes can cause a variety of movement disorders depending on the location and the severity of the lesion. Hemiplegia is common when the stroke affects the corticospinal tract. Other causes of hemiplegia include spinal cord injury, especially brown sackward syndrome, traumatic brain injury or disease affecting the brain. A permanent brain injury that occurs during the intrauterine life during delivery or early in life can lead to hemiplegic cerebral palsy. As a lesion that results in hemiplegia occurs in the brain or spinal cord, hemiplegic muscles display features of upper motor neuron syndrome. Features other than weakness include decreased movement control, clonus that means a series of involuntary rapid muscle contractures that's known as clonus, spasticity, exaggerated deep tendon reflexes and decreased endurance. The incidence of hemiplegia is much higher in premature babies than term babies. There is also a high incidence of hemiplegia during pregnancy and experts believe that this may be related to either a traumatic delivery using forceps or some event which caused brain injury during the childbirth. There is tentative evidence of an association with undiagnosed celiac disease and improvement after withdrawal of gluten from the diet. Other causes of hemiplegia in adults include trauma, 
bleeding, brain infection and also cancers. Individuals who have uncontrolled diabetes, hypertension or those who smoke a lot have higher chances of developing a stroke. Weakness of one side of the face may occur and may be due to a viral infection, stroke or a cancer. Now, what could be the treatment? The treatment for hemiparesis is the same treatment given to those recovering from strokes or brain injuries. Healthcare professionals such as health, physical therapists, occupational therapists play a very large role in assisting these patients in their recovery. Treatment is focused on improving sensation and motor abilities, allowing the patient to better manage their activities of daily living. Some strateg strategies used for treatment include promoting the use of hemiparetic limb using functional tasks, maintaining range of motion and using neuromuscular electrical stimulation to decrease spasticity and increase awareness of the limb. At the more advanced level, using constraint induced movement therapy will encourage overall function and use of the affected limb. Now something very special I am going to tell about, mirror therapy. Mirror therapy has also been used early in stroke rehabilitation and involves using the unaffected limb to stimulate motor function of the hemiparetic limb. Results from a study on patients with severe hemiparesis concluded that mirror therapy was successful in improving motor and sensory function of the distal hemiparetic upper limb. Active participation is critical to the motor learning and recovery process. Therefore, it is important to keep these individuals motivated so they can make continual improvements. Also, speech pathologists work to increase function for people with hemiparesis. Treatment should be based on assessment by the relevant health professionals including physiotherapists, doctors and occupational therapists. Muscles with severe motor impairment including weakness need these therapists to assist them with specific exercise and are likely to require help to do this. I hope I made it very very clear about hemiparesis and hemiplasia. Thanks for patient listening. Until I bring some more interesting topic of medical interest, until then goodbye. I am signing off for today. This is Colonel Pradeep, your buddy. Bye-bye.